Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering a question from October, November 2020 from the Cambridge 9709 syllabus. This is paper four, variant two. It's a mechanics paper and this is A level. It says a particle is projected vertically upwards with a speed of 40 meters per second alongside a building of height h meters. Given that the particle is above the level of the top of the building for four seconds, find h the height of the building. So here you have um, a particle which is projected from a point on the ground somewhere. Okay, let's just project it from a point somewhere down here, let's say. And it reaches a height, let's say height h is over here. The, the, to the top of the building say that's the building side of the building so it's projected from this level okay um let's call that level o okay and it reaches the top of the building okay let's call that level let's let's call that x right and that distance is h meters okay that distance is h meters we don't know what it is we have to find it okay we know that at this level it was projected upwards with a speed of 40 meters per second okay and it got to this level x okay and it fell back down again and the time for which it was above the top of the building was four seconds okay so the time let's let's say it got to this level at time one let's say it got to this level here on the way up you got to the level at time one because it's going to go up so on the way up let's say let's call that time one and on the way down let's call that time two so it went up past this level to the top of this flight came down again and we know that the difference between time two and time one is four seconds it took it's four seconds it was above that level all right so that's h the height of the building um i guess that's it with that information we have to find the value of the height of the height of the building. Right? Now, there's a couple of different ways we could go about doing this. All right. Um, one of the ways we could do it, which is probably the simplest way in this case, I think, would be to work out what the highest point it reaches. All right. The highest point it reaches. Let's call that the highest point. Let's call it um, P. Okay. I'm just calling it P. So we can say O to P. Okay is the um high the the greatest height it reaches the greatest height reached by the ball is it a ball or particle let me just try to get my handwriting a bit recognizable there o to p is the let's say the maximum height of the particle okay when it reaches its maximum height so that's the level p Okay, we're going to call that the maximum height. Okay, and now what we know is at the maximum height, it comes to rest. The velocity is going to become zero, the maximum height. Okay, so I'll just I'll just put that as I won't put v or anything. I'll just put at that point, its height, its 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 velocity is zero. So with this, we could work out its maximum height. And what we understand is because it's falling freely under gravity, and of course, gravitational force is going to be acting downwards with a value of g, which we'll use as, as 10 for um, Cambridge, all right, 9.8 if we're doing KM at Excel. But as you know, it's going to go up, now it's going to have four seconds, it's going to be above the level of building. So that, what that means is that four seconds is going to be divided into two equal parts because it's got, it's got like this constant acceleration it's going under. So it's going to, the acceleration will decelerate it, and then it will start accelerating again and come back down to this level again. So for two seconds, it's going to be above here. And for two seconds, it's going to be below, going up. And for two seconds, it's going to go. So it's going to reach this point. Two seconds later, it's going to get to the top of his flight. And then two seconds later, it's going to go back to that level again because it's four seconds that it's above the building. So the first two seconds, it's going to be going up. And then the next two seconds, is going to come down back to the bottom, back to the same level as the top of the building. So that information should help us. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work out the maximum height. So I'm going to call that H max. Okay, H max. I'll call that H max. 
So I, I'm going to work out what this is. This is called H max. I've called it here. Okay, H max. Okay, H max. So let's consider from O to P, and let's write down what we know from Suvat. Okay. So we can work out now the the greatest height it reaches using Suvat. Now S in this case, uh, first of all. We're going to take up as positive because it's been projected upwards. And we're taking O as a starting point. At that point, it's going up. So up is positive for this, for this particular thing. Up is positive. So S is H max. That's what we want to find in the first part of the question. U is 40. It's upwards, so it's positive. V is 0 because it's reached the top of its flight at the point that we're finding from O to P. A is minus G because we're taking up as positive. So it's going to be minus 10. Because we're using Cambridge, it'll be minus 10. And T, we don't know. We don't know the T. But we can use uh, here V squared equals U squared plus 2AS to find out the maximum height. So we have V squared, which is 0. 4, 40 squared plus 2 times minus 10 times S, which is H max. S this here, or H, S is, is the maximum height that the ball reaches. Not the bit high of the building, the maximum height that the ball reaches. Okay, or the particle reaches. Okay, so this is going to give us um, negative. That's going to be one thousand six hundred equals minus twenty times h max. So h max is going to be uh, minus one thousand six hundred divided by twenty. That's going to be uh, divided by minus twenty, which is positive eighty meters. So eighty meters is the height of the whole building. Okay, eighty meters. Okay, is the height of the whole, no, 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 sorry. It's not the height of the whole building, it's the height that, the highest po point that the particle reaches. Now, we want to work out now what the um, distance it's moved in two seconds. All right, now what we can do is, we can now look at from P to X and see how far it's moved in P to, from P to X. And if we subtract that distance from 80, we will have the height of the building. So that's another way, that's the way we can do it. We can say, all right, let's find out what P to X is. Let's find out, let's consider P to X. Now at P to X, in this case, at P, it's going to be, we're considering, you know, it's starting to move down now. So we're going to take down as positive for this, this section here. Why? Because from P to X, it's moving down, it starts moving down. It's going to the top of this flight, that's from X to P, and then from P to X, it's going to be going down. All right, so what do we know about P to X? Let's see what we know. Um, we want to find S. Okay, I'm going to call that X, that distance, I'm going to call it X. Okay, what I want to find? U is going to be zero because it's starting at the top of the flight. It's got to the top of the flight, it's about to fall down again. Um, v, we don't know. Um, A is going to be positive 10 this time. Why? Because we're taking down as positive for this section here. And T is two seconds. We know it's two seconds. That, you know, it's two seconds going up and two seconds going down. So we want to find out how far it goes in those two seconds. So I want to find what S is, I know what U is, I know what A is, I know what T is, so I have S equals U T plus a half A T squared. So X is going to be U times T, which is zero, plus a half times 10 times two. Okay, so that's going to be, X is going to be uh, 10, half times 10 times two, uh, times two squared, sorry, that's my bad half a t squared, be careful about that. So that's going to be two times uh, 10, which is 20 meters. So we know that this distance here is, this is 20 meters. And we know the total distance is 80 meters. So h is going to be equal to 80 meters minus 20 meters, which is 60 meters. Okay, so that's the answer, h equals 60 meters. Right, that's one way of doing it. Okay, there's other ways of doing it as well, okay, which would be a bit more, I would say, um, algebraically challenging. Okay, um, I could show you another way of doing it as well, which in fact I will do just to help you understand the situation. All right, so um, just give me a second to set it up. Okay, alternatively, we could do, we could have done the following. So we have our level where the ground is okay we have the top of the building okay 
and we know that it's been projected upwards with a speed of 40 meters per second okay we can call this um what did i call it there o and the top of the building i called it x okay let's call it o and x again so we can call this o we can call this x i know the same information that at this level at the level x okay it's reached level x and basically at this level on the way up okay um and the way down let's call this t1 on the way up and t2 on the way down we know the difference between these two times is four seconds okay so we know that now what i could do is i could say okay this is h okay this is h what we have to find we know that um acceleration due to gravity is down g all right and we know that that's all we know so we could say all right let's look at o to x okay o to x we could say s u v a t so s is h u is 40 v is we don't know okay a is um minus 10 and now t there's two there's two things i'm looking at this is this is o to x on the way up i'm also going to look at o to ax when it's on the way down okay now it started from o so it's going to be in both cases up is positive why because at the start of the journey it was projected upwards at o where i'm considering the beginning of this journey it's going upwards all right in this case here why did i take down as positive because at the beginning of the new new section of the journey from p to x it was going downwards so i took down as positive that's how i like to deal with things so here even though i'm considering it's gone up all right that's going to be after two seconds this t t1 is is going to be i'll call it t1 we don't know how, how many seconds we, well, that it is but it's the time it, it took to go up there all right and for the second one S is H. The, remember, H is not the distance it's traveled through. It's the displacement, how far out of place it is. Whether it's gone up and then down again, it doesn't matter about the extra distance. H is the displacement, not the distance traveled. So whenever it's at that level, whether it's on the way up or the way down, its displacement will be that same H. So that H and that H will be the same, even though it's gone up and down again, because H is not the distance covered. It is the displacement, how far out of its place it is. Very, very important. And U is still 40. Okay, V would actually be the same V as this, but the opposite. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be negative, negative V1. But anyway, we don't have to worry about that. But it'll, the, the same velocity is going up with, it's going to be going down with, but the opposite direction. Um, A is going to be minus 10 still, because we're taking up as positive, because we started at O. Now, T here is going to be T2. Okay, now I know T2 minus T1 is four seconds. I can, really, I can link them together, all right? So in fact, I can even write this. I can say T2 is equal to T1 plus 4. I can rearrange that. So I could even write that here, and that will help us. I can say T is equal to um, T1 plus 4, four seconds later. So I can, I can actually write it like that, and that will help us um, to have the same value of T in our equations. Okay. Now I'm going to run out of space here, so I'm just going to go down off the page just to um, continue but just I wanted to show you this other way, way I personally for this particular question I think this is easier what we did here right but you can do it this way as well just showing you you can do it this way right so now we can set up pairs of equations you have s u a t for both of them s u a t so we have s equals u t plus a half a t squared so here s is h u is 40 t is um, t1 okay plus a half times a is minus 10 and you got t1 squared okay that's from this from this one h is h um, u is 40 t is t1 plus 4 okay the time that this has been going for it's going up and then down again so it's time one plus four more seconds plus a half times minus 10 because again, we're taking up as positive because we started going up in the beginning of this uh, section 
And t is um, half a t squared, so it's going to be t1 plus 4 all squared. Okay, so now, just excuse me for going off the page a bit, but I'm going to now um, solve these two equations. Now, we see that both of them are in terms of h, so I can solve them simultaneously. So I can simplify this. This is 4t times t1, and that's going to be, let me just, um, that's going to be um, a half times minus, that's minus 5t squared equals, and this is going to be 4t t1 plus 160, and that's going to be minus 5 times, and I'll expand this bracket. In fact, I want to expand the bracket. I'll leave it like this first and see if I can simplify a little bit. Um, you can see here the 40t and the 40t will cancel out. If I divide everything by 5, it will make the numbers a bit smaller. This is going to be minus t squared equals 160 divided by 5. 5 goes into 16 three times, remainder 1. Um, that's 35. Is that right? No, 32, sorry. 32. Okay, 160 divided by 5. 5 goes into 16 three times, remainder 1. 5, yeah, 32. Minus, and if I divide this by 5, that will go. So I'll have t. 1 plus 4 squared. So I have minus t squared equals 32 minus, keep this in a bracket to save it for the minus sign, that's going to be t squared plus 8t plus 16. So um, if you expand the brackets, you have t minus t squared equals 32 minus t squared minus 8t minus 16. Okay, these will cancel out. So we're left with 0 and you've got 32 um, minus 16, that's 16. So you have 32 minus 16, okay, which is 16, sorry, minus 8t. So you have 16 minus 8t equals 0. So therefore you have 8t equals 16. So t is equal to 2 seconds, all right? So that's the time um, it took to get up to the top here. That's t1, basically. So we can work out now from this equation here the height. So we know that t1 equals 2 seconds, therefore height is equal to 40 times 2 um, minus, that's going to be minus 5 times 2 squared, because minus 5 times 2 squared, that's going to be 40 times 2 is 80, minus 5 times uh, 4 is 20, so h equals 60 meters. All right, so we get the same answer as we got here. I personally think this was a bit easier, but this also works, all right? Just to show you how, it's important for us to understand that the displacement means how far out of position it is, not the distance it's traveled through. Okay, so the time it took to get there have the same displacement as the time it took to get there. The displacement will be the same for those two times. The times will be different, but the displacement will be the same because it's the same level. Right, so there's part A done. I've gone a bit f longer than I uh, intended to, of course, because I want to show you different ways of answering these questions and give you a, a good understanding. Now we're going to go on to part B. Now part B says one second after the first particle is projected, a second particle is projected vertically upwards from the top of the building with a speed 20 meters per second. So you got your building. Okay. You got your building. Let's say that's the bottom of the building here. It's the floor level. Okay. Um, what did I call them here? I call them O, X, and P, O, X. So let me call that O and X again. All right. Um, we know that that distance now we worked it out is 60 meters. So we have that information. So I know that that is 60 meters now, the H. Okay. We know that this ball was projected at 40 meters per second. Okay. And we know that there's another ball projected from here at 20 meters per second, one second later. Okay, and we know that they met a certain height, they reached the same height. It says, denoting the time after projection by the first particle as t seconds, find the value of t for which the two particles are at the same height above the ground. Now, the same, they could be at the same height above the ground at any point that uh, on the journey. We don't actually know where. But I'm going to just arbitrarily put it over here. It could be somewhere down here. But in the end, our answer will give us 
that uh, you know indication according to the signs that we have. So I'm going to call okay this distance that it reaches. Oh, whoops, that's a bit big. The distance um, that they reach the same level, I'm going to call that distance h. Okay, and I'm going to call that level, um, you know, let's call that level um, p, right? Let's call it p. Okay, that's the level at which they reach the same height. Okay, now we know that um, this has been thrown upwards, this has been thrown upwards, but from different positions. So I'm going to look at first O to P, and I'm also going to look at X to P. So O to P for particle 1, this is particle 1, and um, X to P for particle 2. Okay, so for particle 1 from O to P, I'm going to write down what I know. I know that it's projected upwards, I know the acceleration due to gravity is down, so I know S is 60 meters. No, S, we're, no, we're not looking at, we're looking at where it's going to reach this level, H, O to P. So S is equal to, for this H, I want to find H. If I want to find the time when they reach that same H. U is 40. V, I don't know what it is. It could be going up, could be going down. We don't know, we don't know what, what the velocity is. It doesn't mean it's at the top of its flight. It could be down here even, we don't know. So V, we don't know. That's something unknown. Okay, that's the velocity of one at that point. A is minus 10 because we're going upwards and gravity is acting downwards and we're taking up as positive um, t is what we want to find that's the time for which the first particle has been in the air now for the second particle it's starting from this point here it's starting from x okay so we want to find the time it takes for it to reach or the you know um this height we want to we want to find that okay we want to find the height that it reaches so it has traveled this distance which is basically this distance is h minus 60 it's not the same distance because it's been it's been thrown from the top of the building okay so it's going to be h minus 60 all right h minus 60 okay now so for x to p you have s u v a and t so s is h minus 60 u is this is 20 it's been thrown up at 20. Again, we're taking up as positive because it was thrown up. V, we don't know. We don't know what the velocity is when it reaches that height. The acceleration is minus 10 because acceleration acts down and we're taking up as positive. Now, this T is different from this T. This T, we're told, we, we're told to call this T, T. Now, this, is, this has been in the air for one second less than this. This, this was thrown up. All right, one second later, this was thrown up. So the amount of time that the particle 2 has been up in the air is one second less than the particle 1. So this t will be whatever that t is, but minus 1. Okay, so that's very, very important for us to understand. Okay, so now we have to use s and u and a and t. So again, we're going to be using s equals ut plus a half a t squared. So for particle 1, s is h, u is 40 t is t uh, plus a half times minus 10 times t squared and for particle 2 you have s is h minus 60 you have u is 20 you have t is t minus 1 and you have plus a half times minus 10 times t minus 1 squared Okay, the time is t minus 1, so s equals ut plus a half at squared. Now, when I try to, so let me just simplify this a little bit first. So h equals 40t, that's going to be minus 5t squared. And here we have h minus 60 equals, um, I'll expand that, 20t minus 20 minus 5 times t minus 1 squared. Um, I can make this a bit simpler, h equals 20t I'm going to have um, add 60, so that's going to be plus 40 minus 5 times t minus 1 squared. Um, so now what I can do is I can say that this is h, this is the same h, so I can now say that, um, you know, I can basically substitute this instead of that h, all right, and solve them simultaneously. So I have 40t minus 5t squared is equal to 20t plus 40 
minus 5 times t minus 1 squared. Before I expand, I can see again there's a 5 that's a common factor. Okay. In fact, I can actually do something else here. I can say 4t um, minus 20t. That becomes 20t minus 5t squared equals 4t minus 5t minus 1 squared. I've just subtracted 20t from both sides just to you know simplify that a little bit. Now I can divide every, every term by 5 in this equation because all of them are divisible by 5. It's an equation. You can do that. So 20 divided by 5 is 4. So 4 times t minus t squared equals 40 divided by 5 is 8 minus you're going to have 1 t minus 1 squared okay so um yeah so let's just make it a bit easier let's bring everything onto one side so you have t minus 1 squared plus 4 t minus t squared minus 8 equals 0 if i expand this i get t squared minus 2 t plus 1 plus 4 t minus t squared minus 8 equals 0 and we see t squared minus t squared they will cancel out you have minus 2t plus 4t which is 2t 1 minus 8 which is minus 7 equals 0 so 2t equals 7 therefore t equals 3.5 seconds so 3.5 seconds they will be at the same height okay so this is a bit of a involved question you've got to be very careful and very clear about what your displacements are and stuff okay and you know um now what i'm going to do is i'm going to show uh, we'll we'll try and see what the value of h actually is and see if it's above or below it really doesn't matter if it's below or above and i'll show you how it, it gives you the same or, or you will give you a sense of, of what's happening here so if i put t equals 3.5 into the first equation here okay if i put 3.5 into here let's see what happens we have 40 times 3.5 minus 5 times 3.5 squared okay minus okay 40 times 3 minus 5 times 3.5 squared that gives me 78.75 so in fact h is above there it is above there 78.85 that means you know it's 78.85 so it's going to be 18.85 meters above this level okay so it does happen to be above there now if it happened that h was less than that for example supposing h ended up being 50 meters all right then h would be 50 and then this would be 50 minus 60 which is minus 10 minus 10 so the s here would be minus 10 meaning it's 10 meters below x because we took up as positive that's all so it will give us the right answer in the end whether it's above or below whether we end up the high because it could have gone up and then down this could have gone up and then down they could have met on the way down below this building we don't know that until we calculate it but it doesn't matter where you put this okay as long as you put it somewhere and you get your equation correct that's fine okay so you don't have to worry too much about that so that's the answer to this question it's a bit of a, a complicated one and um, there's another one almost identical to this from uh, cambridge from um, edexcel which i um i answered some i think i've got a video on that as well um from some years back but anyway, so it's quite an interesting question. Other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this area over here um, at the end of the video. And you can find other questions from this topic of constant acceleration, um, you know, vertical motion under gravity. Um, you'll find, that I'll put constant acceleration here and I'll put a playlist here for just, just dealing with vertical motion under gravity. Um, and all the questions I've done on those will be collected there and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.